Hello, everyone, and welcome to day number 39 of 66 Days of Data with Nime, where I try to go together with you from zero to hero using Nime in data science and data analytics. So today we are going to continue on the preparation for our Sunburst chart. And I have a very interesting concept I'm going to share with you today, which is loops. And you might have heard about loops and looping and repetitive stuff. If you ever touch the field of programming together, I promise you, I will show you a way how you can do it without writing a single line of code, just using NIME as your visual tool. But before we do that, let me just quickly basically give you a short um, heads up and some information as you can see here. No, there, since today, I'm quite honored to be an officially NIME certified trainer. So I received the feedback today that I'm a NIME trainer now since today. So I'm pretty glad um, to celebrate this with you guys. Um, my question would be, what, what should I do? What should I do? I have a few ideas in mind, but I would love to hear what you guys in the audience think would make sense. What special should we do to celebrate that I am now officially an IAM certified trainer? Maybe you have an idea, just write it in the comments or uh, wherever you are watching this. Other than that, I also am talking about what I am planning. I've talked about it before, but you see, I have received this review copy of Codeless Time Series Analysis with Nime, which basically follows the same idea than the 66 days of data, just that it not focuses on data alone, but specifically tunes in to time series. And that is especially interesting when it comes to forecasting prediction if you come from a finance world like I do. So I will definitely do a um, video series on this one. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss out on these completely free videos using a completely free tool like Nine, then please make sure to subscribe and follow me. So what is the third and important announcement? Let me just quickly show you. And I have to change my studio view here um, because oh, maybe just hide that. Um, just a moment. That's probably not what I want to show. Um, just a moment. Um, how can I turn that off? Well, looks like I can't. <laughs> funny, funny. So, but it basically wanted to show you is basically this. I will be on the Nine Fault Summit in Austin. So, if you have a chance to step by, just make sure that you say hello. I'm also planning a few things together with the uh, good people from Nine. So. We probably will do a few uh, interesting stuff there, a few, a little bit of interesting stuff there. And what we will also do is we will stream live from the NIME Summit, especially on Monday and maybe some other days as well. We might interview some people there. We have some special stuff. If you have a chance to get to the NIME Summit while it's still available also as an online option, I only can recommend um the in-person option because it offers great training opportunities you really learn a lot there you hear great inspiring things and you can connect with your fellow peers plus you get a lot of good food there by the way um make sure to drop by make sure to say hello i will definitely bring my physical copy of codeless time series analysis with nine with me because i have corey wisinger the author or one of the authors of this book um i want to have their signature in that one so if you happen to be there, if you see a chance to say hello, just tap me on the shoulder, just say hello, Philip, here we are. And I'm pretty sure we will have a nice conversation. But with all these announcements aside, let's get back to Nime and let's get back. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe we just, let me just see where can I turn this off? All right. And maybe I just turn off my my studio software you see it's a little bit late here and maybe i'm a little bit confused um so what i basically want to do with you today is i want to share with you what we are going to do today we are finalizing our preparation work so in the previous video that we done earlier today 
uh, we basically created the bins and that is what you already have seen here and we created a sunburst chart and i told you in that last video why it's probably not the best so one of the problems and let me just quickly repeat that is basically that we do not have any descriptions what these outer layers these outer rings basically refer to so it would be good to have at least some kind of rudimentary label in here and that's what we're going to do today and to do that we are going to use loops loops and looping through things so it's just like you go from a to b and then you go just back to a with the next iteration that's basically description of looping so let's just quickly look at the nine website what they write for today for 39 date 39 which we are on today they say bint buckets might not have a distinctive name let's loop through the bint columns to change their bin names and we want to be it in the way of first three letters of column name plus the default bin name. All right. So that is what we're basically going to do. Um, and definitely worth reading and watching are these great videos from Nime TV here. Looping and especially the visual way of creating loops is really, really, really helpful here. So uh, make sure you bookmark these sessions. They are usually not very long, but they explain really well how looping works. So let's just quickly jump over to Nime and basically see what we can do about a problem. We get rid of the sunburst chart so that we are stuck with the column resorter. And what we basically want to do here, let me just increase the size of this a little bit. What we want to basically want to do, if we have something like po popularity 0, 14, and these are the lower and upper thresholds, these are the bins, the categories, so to say, um, we want to have it not 0, 14, because as we have seen in that sunburst chart, that doesn't tell us anything. We want to have it like the first three letters of the column, and that would be pop and then 0, 14. And here for duration, it would be dur. 177 225 and for densibility it would be probably dan and then 0397 and 0532 and so on and so forth so if we want if you see these are all strings the string manipulation node is probably our best friend but we have a problem because each of these columns has its own name but we want the loop to go through each column iteratively. These are now, what is it, 17 columns. And we want it to create this kind of um, naming. And we also do not want to override at the end of the day this name. So I have, quote unquote, stolen an idea from another workflow I have seen. So let me show you how we basically do this. So first of all, we want to loop through the columns. Start with this column, do the work, then with this column, do the work, then with this column, do the work, and so on and so forth. So to do that, we basically need a loop start node, but not any loop start node, but the column list loop start so this one here will go through the columns so loop through columns and then basically this marks the starting area um, of the loop that we are creating and this is also the point you can see that from its special color here it's blue that indicates a looping node it, this is the point where it will jump back to. So after we have done that, the first thing we definitely are going to need is a column rename because we need to make the, um, the loop or the, the column um, generic, the column name for each column. But we also don't want to use and to lose the information that we have. And the good thing is, if we create a column list loop start, what this does is, well, it starts with the very first column, but let's have a look at the flow variables. 
And here we track our current column that we're iterating over the current column name. And that is something we're definitely going to use. So let's just add a column rename to the game here. And basically, we double click on this one and we change it to some generic name. Let's just call it generic, generic name, all right? With this one column, because we're looping over it and we only have one column here, we double click it, it goes here. We have also flow variables here and we open this up. And this is our first iteration. If you remember, NIME always starts counting at zero. And what we can do here is we can basically set the old column name to the current column name. Like this. All right. So now we have basically created a um this now this now this column is now called generic um let me show you generic name and now this this will be called for each iteration this the columns that appear here will be called the same so let me just show you what we what we have here um so basically um, instead of going through this each and every single time, this here, this determines what column we're going to change. And we take this one from the flow variable we have just set. So this one always looks, instead of always looking for track popularity class, which is no longer there once we iterated over that column, basically we will look at what is in the flow variable. And in the flow variable, we always have the current column listed all right so now we can basically uh, maybe we just write rename current iteration call to a generic name and now we can use the string manipulation so let's just select that double click here and now we can say okay what do we want so first of all we want to join two things we want to join the current column name which we still have stored in that flow variable then we want to include the current value which would be here in the column list and maybe we just make it um maybe we just do capital letter so let's just and then we want the content there so let's start from inside out. The very first thing we want to do is we want to have a substring, a substring of the current column name. And we see here the um, how, how we write this is we just double click it. And then we say, OK, the substring of what? It's the current column name. Where should it start? Well, at the very first letter. It's zero, so position number zero. And how many letters do we want to have from this? Well, the first three. All right. Now that we have that, let's basically um, let's basically make this capital letters. And there is this uppercase. So we just select all of that and just say uppercase. Now the result should be uppercase but we also want to join it so that's the that's the concatenate function if you're coming from an excel world we also want to join the result so these uppercase first three letters we want to join it with the actual value so we double click join once this is selected and now we see we are in the join which is indicated by the arrows here as you see if i just type comma you see the um, parenthesis light up and i know that i'm in a join function and then i want to have what is the content of the current column so we now say okay what's in the column generic name and what do i want to do with that i basically want to replace this value which is only the values right now the categories the bins with this newly created name so let's just execute and see how it looks 
Yeah, that looks good. If you remember that this one here is the track popularity class and one low. So this looks pretty good. All right. So create labeled bins is what I would call it. Now we still have the problem that this column is called generic name. We don't want a column that's called generic name. So what do we do? We just add another column rename because if we look at the flow variables, we can see that we still have the current iteration, the current column name we're iterating over here, which is the track popularity class. So let's add it back in. Column rename. Just that this time we are not going to change the old name, but the new one. Return or re, how do we say re? Write the original column name into the header. How do we do that? We double click here. Let's say change. We leave this one as it is because that will be overwritten by a flow variable. All columns, first iteration as we have only one current column name. Right? So this time we set it for the new column name, the name that will be that will be the renaming function, so to say. Execute. And you see it's named back to track popularity class. Now the only thing we have to do is to end the loop. So it jumps back here to the list loop start, and then it goes over the next and over the next and over the next and over the next. One thing we'd like to do is we'd like to append columns. So it should be the loop endnote that appends columns. And of course, there is one, and that is called loop end column append. All good things in life rhyme, and so does this very nice note. So there are not very many sections. We leave it as it is, and we just say, and loop and append changed call. And if I now execute this one, you will very quickly see how it loops and loops and loops over it, and we will see the final result. So F7, you see, and we're done. And now, all of a sudden, we have the track popularity class TRA1. We have the popularity, POP, and it's a category 0 to 14. We have the duration, DUR, 177 to 225. We have the explicit, either 0 or 1. We have the densibility. 0 0.397 to 0 0.532. And if we now put this tomorrow in our Sunburst chat, this will be much more speaking than just the values alone. And that's basically what I wanted to show you guys here. So let's just turn these back on. That's basically all the prep work we needed to do for the Sunburst chart. We will do this one and the next task in two videos tomorrow. If you don't want to miss out, make sure you subscribe and follow. And don't forget, write in the comments what we should do to celebrate my badge of becoming a certified trainer. I'm open to many ideas. We could do a very long live stream. We could do like an endless number of notes that we're explaining, or we do a long workflow from start to finish or whatever. Just make sure you write in the comments. I will evaluate and then pick a winner. All right. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow in 66 days of data with Nime. Bye-bye.